Welcome to Math Without Worksheets. This activity is called Tally Tower. You're going to need a deck of cards, a pen, and a piece of paper. Take the face cards out and the jokers out. Fold your paper in half, hot dog style. You can use a ruler to make a column down the middle of the paper, or you can just do it freehand. Either way is completely fine. We're going to actually be putting the name of player one and player two in each of the columns and writing start at the bottom, as that's where we start building our tower. This activity is going to help you practice tallying, skip counting, comparing numbers, and can inspire some number talk. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, to start the game, you take your cards and you can just put them here, and each player draws a card and they flip it face up. So four and seven. Now player one is going to start by comparing the numbers. So player, num would, player one would say, well, four is less than seven. And with an early math learner, I would go over just how to do a greater than less than symbol. But four is less than seven. And I would just remind my learner that the crocodile always opens up their mouth to the larger number. And the first couple times I might draw the crocodile's teeth. I find that little reminder helps students to understand um, how to make their symbols. And then remind them if the numbers are the same, then they are called equal numbers and you use the equal sign. Okay, so now we would do the tally and player one would tally one, two, three, four. Player two is gonna tally seven. So they would start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So every group of five is on one line. As you move up, you create the tower. Simple. I would also just remind my learners to keep their tallies within the line. So within the size of the line, uh, they don't have to be in a straight line. It can be a wonky tower, whatever. But I would say to keep them within that size and one group of tallies per line. Then we would just continue on. We can discard those other cards. Three, and 10. So player two now gets to compare the numbers and player two would say three is less than 10. Okay, and then we do the tally. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I do find with an early math learner, there is a little bit of a productive struggle here, and that is important um, to let the learner work through. But I noticed the first few times George and I played this, he would get stuck whenever he crosses, he knows that's five, but when he's counting and he, he, he crosses it and say it's actually, you know, for this one, um, as I did it, it was one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He had to kind of work through that. I did help him the first couple times and now he does it and you'll see he'll pause, he'll think, and then he'll figure it out. So encourage them uh, just because it might be a little difficult, um, make it, a, it's no big deal. Just let them know, oh, it's no big deal. This is how you do it. Um, and then as they get become more comfortable with it, you can help them less and less. But it is definitely worth helping them work through that struggle or that uh, difficulty. Okay, the next one is one and six. So player one would get to go do their, um, to write the numbers. So one is less than six and then tally one, and this player gets to tally six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then eight and one. So again, switch which player is doing the writing and the comparing. They would say eight is greater than one. And then do the tallies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I do encourage them to count out loud and one. Okay, so now that our tower is done and all our cards have been used up, I would now, depending on the math 
confidence of the learner, guide them through just a little conversation. So with an early learner or a developing learner, I might say, since you're trying to show them that tallies are a visual representation of a number, I would say, who do you think has the bigger number? Whose cards would total to the bigger number? The first couple times, it actually did make, uh, make him think. Now he knows, well, this tower is taller, so that one has more numbers. But again, if this is the first time your learner is encountering this concept of tallying and counting, it might be worth pointing out to them. Now, if you have a more developed learner, you might go a little deeper. So I definitely recommend, no matter what the age of your learner, to practice skip counting the numbers. If they are a more developed learner and more confident with skip counting, you could have them count both tally, ta both tally towers on their own. If they are a early learner, you might wanna go through and model that skip counting. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, 115, 16, 17. And I would write the total 117. And it's worth saying when you're modeling math at home with your child, with your learner, n say 117, not 117. It is actually in the math curriculum. You could have them compare these numbers in any sort of way that fits the outcomes you're doing. Some ways could include what is the total of both numbers? Um, which number is odd or even? Or are the numbers both odd or even? How many hundreds do you have all together? How many tens? How many ones? Um, depending on what content you're teaching or you have taught at this time, uh, you can use these numbers in any number of ways. I hope you've enjoyed this activity. It is a big hit at our house and it really doesn't require very much but it learn it leads to some good skills practice as well as the opportunity for math talks and discussions at the end about the numbers so thanks for watching and have a beautiful day